bit then is I've called it living the values, but it really takes us into some of the sort of softer issues, perhaps those issues that I started to uh, identify at the beginning about um, our understanding for research about expectations. And I want to go through some of those things which actually have more subtle effect and perhaps reflect more on the nature of our education system more broadly. So a little bit about expectations, culture, the company we keep, the social isolation of disabled children, and a little bit about voice. So um, this is um, going back to, um, uh, actually, uh, to be honest, before I was a psychology undergraduate, um, but a piece of research which uh, would never see the light of day today because of the ethics considerations. And it was quite a small piece of research, but it, it became quite famous because of what it, it showed. Um, and it showed that um, uh, in a classroom where a teacher was told that this group of children were going to do well and uh, flourish in their future career, very bright group of children, these children will go ahead and flourish, whatever you do. And of course you will support their learning and development. Uh, as, as you would for all children, but this, this group of children, is, they're going to be high flyers. This group of children here, we know that you'll work with them, you'll support them and all the rest of it, but actually they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not going to be high flyers. Um, they're, um, you know, they're on a slower track and, and, and. So of course what happened was this was a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the end of that year, the children who um, had been told the teacher being told were going to do less well um, did indeed do less well the children have been she'd she been told were going to be the high flyers they did better now you can understand why that would never get through any ethics committee now but it does highlight for us the uh, issue about expectations and um, the um, Obviously, the children were, were, were randomly allocated to the groups in, in that experiment, but it's really it, it, it is quite deeply rooted in our system. And this is the bit of research that I referred to earlier as being about um, aspirations um, and the fact that at that earlier point with young children, there was that possible interpretation that uh, expectations were playing a role in their slower progress. Uh, at an early age, and this is the this is the research that the team undertook uh, to look at aspirations in the teen years. And it, interestingly, uh, as I said, um, it was that um, children's expectations of themselves were compromised, even where those around them continued to have high expectations. So they're com if they like they're sort of gradually accumulated experience of themselves was that they were going to do less well than others, which is quite a deeply worrying message for those children to have received, but to be identifying for themselves lower expectations of their future than their peers were, it is, it suggests this is quite deep seated. And I just want to look at the culture around that because it isn't just in the classroom. This is one of our former secretaries of state. Well, many, many, many secretaries of state ago. We've, I think we've had five this year. Um, but this was um, a former secretary of state talking about ensuring that our education system stretches the most able and in the same speech, which is why I selected this, of course, she talked about some children needing extra help, support and encouragement to get the basics right. Look at the expectations embedded in those two quotes. Those high expectations for the most able and support and encouragement, not expectations, support and encouragement to get the basics, limiting those expectations to the basics. And I think you can see it in different ways. Here is some, uh, some excerpts from um, uh, TS headlines uh, a, a little while ago now, admittedly, but um, about challenge, challenging your brightest pupils and seeing the most able students working more independently. 
we were able to develop effective independent work for mo the most able, but were producing writing frames and help sheets for the least able. Now, where is that expectation of independent working of children who we might, in other quotes, do describe as struggling with learning? So these are quite subtle, deeply embedded issues. They are not just those more overt things that we're seeing in terms of uh, exclusions and um, uh, bullying and um, attendance, it's, it's, it's really very deeply seated. And then look at this thing, um, this quote, it's crucial that our most able students fulfill their potential. We need to harness the talents of these students so that they can become the next generation of business, intellectual and political leaders. If we succeed, it will benefit not only them as individuals, but our country as a whole. Let us just think about the benefit to our country as a whole if disabled students also fulfill their potential, also go on to achieve the, the most they possibly can, also perhaps get that one GCSE that might make a difference between them getting employment when they leave school or getting into a training scheme. But that is, to me, when you when you read it pulled out of that, it's quite deeply embedded in our educational culture. And that's been reinforced in recent years by messages to schools about, you know, the, the, the valued outcome from education is getting children into our top universities. And I think that is um, th that that is problematic for us. And I think it is much more deeply rooted than perhaps we uh, might think of it just on the basis of the rather sharply defined data about exclusions, attendance and those other things. And um, here we get kind of difficult for teachers to balance supporting students who struggle with learning as well as stretching the more able learners as fully as they would like. So we like to stretch the more able learners, but it's difficult to balance that with supporting students who are, who are struggling with learning. So there's quite a sharp distinction in, in the vocabulary used there. Then a little bit about um, the, the company we keep and the sort of social interactions side of it. Now, this is a, a, an observation from some time ago, but uh, unquestionably still applies in, in, in the way that disabled children are more likely to spend more of their time with adults in comparison with their peers. And the recent work on um, teaching assistants in classrooms and how they're applied um, is really uh, quite uh, clear about the fact they have more interactions with uh, teaching assistants, disabled pupils who have allocated a teaching assistant are more likely to spend more interactions with that adult than they are with their peers. And um, th this means, as uh, this quote says, means that uh, those children can be denied the opportunities for age appropriate behavior and, and the exercise of autonomy. Uh, even in the playground, some children may be seen as being um, not able to engage or they may be seen as unable to stand up for themselves or engage in activities on their own. So we have quite a lot of uh, barriers to that social engagement with, with their peers. And the um, third piece of work from the LSE and um, Centre for Longitudinal Studies team uh, is this piece of work uh, called Growing Up Lonely. Now, what this, uh, what this piece of research did was it looked across three of those big longitudinal studies and explored social, uh, social outcomes uh, for the, across um, these three generations. Now, you, you, this is looking at the experience of disabled adults. And what the team found was that you, 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 correction, let, think about disabled adults. You might think that if they were socially isolated, that might relate to their current disability and the fact that they may be dependent on others for going out to the shops. They may be, um, that maybe their local leisure center isn't accessible um, and maybe their social isolation in adulthood stems from that um, 
lack of accessibility, if you like. And what this research found was that that adult experience of social isolation could be tracked back to childhood identified disability or special educational need. So I think we need to look a bit more under a microscope at what is happening in classrooms and how we can promote those social interactions amongst children. Uh, and the um, work on um, teaching assistance is very clear that we have at the moment um, a, a system which tends to isolate children uh, from their teacher, from the curriculum and from their peers. Um, and we need to make sure we, we address that and promote those social interactions, which are going to be so crucial to uh, children, young people as they grow into adult life. So where is the child's voice in all of this? To what extent are we taking into account a child's views when we think about what reasonable adjustments we need to make for them? We, when we think about what's practical and what's effective, we need to make sure that that, that adjustment is informed by children and young people. And very often it isn't. We think this is what we'll do, this will sort it. Well, it may do the opposite. It may exacerbate a particular uh, situation. So um, just going back to the supporting pupils at school with medical conditions, um, this is a very clear articulation of what this um, should what this should look like. It says here they should be fully involved in discussions about their medical support needs and contribute as much as possible to the development of and comply with their individual health care plan. Other pupils, this is a really interesting observation, other pupils will often be sensitive to the needs of those with medical conditions. So thinking back to Hannah Godley in the playground with her high calorie snack, actually, even this guidance recognizes that other pupils may understand the need for adjustments. So, and they may also be very supportive of, of, of a pupil who is managing their, uh, their particular condition. So, it's that idea of pupils uh, being best placed to provide information about how their condition affects them and then therefore uh, involving them in those discussions about their support needs. I think colleagues, that is probably, I'll just go back on that, where I was going to pause again. I think given the time, you might want me to hurtle on and just um, conclude and maybe uh, we could, uh, if there's anyone with a, a question, maybe we could um, uh, just stay on the call a bit beyond that for, for folk who, who don't have other uh, meetings to rush to. Um, would that be okay if we, if, if we just had lunch? Just a few bits of feedback I wanted to ask for at this point. Um, so, I think I was going to ask two questions and I think, Charlotte, I think you have those in the, um, in a poll for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah I'm just pulling those up now. Thank you. Sorry, if everybody could hear, hear that. Um, I'm just pulling up the polls now. Thank you. Don't Mary. forget to scroll down because there's two questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks. Good point, Charlotte. The, just two questions here. Just get a very quick bit of feedback um, uh, about the, the, the seminar. Sorry, you should all have it now. Just two questions there very quick point about sort of the quality of the webinar and then a quick point about um, increased understanding of disability and equality act but the uh, as Charlotte mentioned that uh, question two you need to scroll down I 
I, d I don't need to see the response to this, Charlotte, if you'd be very kind of just let me know when everyone's put something in. Yeah, no problem. I think that's everyone. Okay. Six, seven, seven. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much, Charlotte. I, I don't. We, we don't need to show the um, outcome of that. Thank you. Um, yeah. But I did just want to go a little bit beyond that and just ask you to think about anything that you might go and do following this webinar what might be something very simple such as well you're going to um, get hold of the the guide um, there's, there's a link to that in the presentation and um, we can we can send the presentation around to everyone on the call um, uh, it might be just you're going to um, have a look at that guide it might be that you're going to pass it on to someone else it might be that you're see sorry um, just got a just got to postpone an, an update. Uh, um, it might be that you're going to um, ask someone some questions. If you're a school governor, for example, go and find um, uh, go go and ask some questions of your of your governing body. Um, I'd just like you to put into the chat anything that you think you might do following this seminar. Well, thank you, colleagues. I know some of you are going to have to leave. If you'd be very kind and just um, jot something into the, uh, it, it, however, um, you know, if you're going to talk to someone about it, uh, that's absolutely fine. I'm not looking for, um, I'm not expecting anyone to go out and uh, change the world on the basis of the, 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 the seminar, but very helpful just to see what you might be thinking of doing. That's a very interesting point from Rasheen. Thank you. Very interesting thought about uh, curriculum accessibility. Thank you. Oh, Miri, great. That sounds fantastic. Right, colleagues, don't let me uh, prolong the, the, the agony here, but um, thank you, Charlotte. Uh, great. Okay, colleagues, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Um, really, um, it, it is quite a lot of content that we've gone through, um, but I, I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into some of the very obvious ways in which we are putting uh, disabled children at a disadvantage in, in our education system at the moment, but also some of those more subtle ways in, in which we, we are likely to be discriminating against them in terms of shaping their experiences, which are likely to have an impact on their adult life, um, but also highlighting the importance of not just of the individual duties, but of those collective duties, which I think are importantly, they, they do provide a way forward that can relieve those individual duties to some, uh, to some extent. So with a, 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 all, good, a, all good wishes, and thank you very much for joining me this afternoon and um, uh, uh, look forward to um, any, any follow-up questions from you and we will, um, get the slides sent round to you so you can use them for your own purposes and thank you for joining me thank, thank you very you. much